welcome back to the show Lynette Zhang. She's the chief market analyst over at ITM Trading. Lynette, it's always good to be with you. I need to ask, how are you <laughs> dealing with the heat in Arizona? Well, I am going up to my bug out house mostly. I go up there pretty much every weekend now because it's 30 degrees cooler. But you have to, like, when I have to stay down here because of a specific thing and I go hiking, I do it at, like, 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, and it's still just really hot. So you're in the pool, you're in but air you're... conditioning, or you do whatever you have to do super early. But it's not stopping you from hiking. That's the, that's the part that, that got me. You Waking up at 5 in the morning, good for you. <laughs> yeah, but it's much easier to you. do it at the bug out house. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to know you're staying cool, that you're safe, and uh, you're here with us today to talk about some really important topics. Um, I know you were on not too long ago, but after you were on, there comes this you know, juggernaut of an announcement that after months of debate about various currency and commodity baskets, a Russian-China-led consortium has apparently settled on using gold, alas, as the basis of a new planned international currency system separate from the U.S. dollar and the euro. This was reported on Russian television, um, but they plan to formally introduce this new system next month at the BRICS summit. So I'm curious to get your thoughts when you saw this news, what you were thinking. I mean, do you believe the news? And two, before we actually talk about the system, why do you think they announced it? Like if it's supposed to be a, co a competitor to the dollar, if they're planning something, um, why announce it? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because yes, when I heard that news, immediately went to my mind was they can't do it till they burn off the debt. So unless they are creating with, with what backing. So I, of course, did some digging because that's what I'm about. And, yes. uh, and this announcement was made from the Russian embassy, I think it was in Kenya, but it was somewhere in, yes. in Africa. Yes. And Kenya. then RT picked up on it and ran it as if it was a given. Now, when I did my digging into it, what the, what the BRICS nations, what the BRICS bank is actually saying is that um, they don't have plans to back the cur any currency or certainly the BRICS currency with gold at this point, that all they're talking about is enabling all of its members to use their own local currency to transact with each other. Now, Russia has announced that they're not going to be attending this BRICS summit next month. So it's going to be really kind of interesting with them backing out. And I understand, you know, why they did with the Ukraine war and not wanting to get the whole world involved and in, in thinking that they're going to do it. But I personally, ultimately, yes. And I think a more interesting story is actually what's happening in Zimbabwe because that's where the test of a gold-backed CBDC is taking place at the moment, but um, no, I don't, I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can do it. Well, well, well and thank you for, for explaining that because one of the questions that came to mind is, okay, even if it's China and Russia, they don't have enough gold to back such a system. Don't you need a lot of gold to get that kind of system off the ground? Actually, that's like a misconception of a lot of people. Like, well, they okay. can't back a currency with gold because there's not enough gold. Well, what really matters is the price of the gold in terms of that currency. And the whole point of gold being a stabilizing influence is because of its rarity and its broad-based use. So you don't actually really need a tremendous, tremendous amount of gold in order to back a currency, it would just be how it was valued in terms of that currency. So we will see a gold backing again because they're going to have to do it in order to get confidence of the population to use the currency, which is what makes what's going on in Zimbabwe so interesting because they're coming out, they're in the test phase right now to see acceptance of a gold-backed CBDC, except that at least at this point, I have not been able to find wh where in their documentation 
they're saying that that goal that that CBDC will actually be convertible into gold. And until a currency is actually convertible, how do you know the gold is there? I mean, it's it's kind of like a crapshoot. So it's really interesting for me to see how this is going to be accepted there. And I'm certain, I am 100% certain, every single central bank is watching this. Re- okay, so to that point, and I'm happy that you're, you're, you're focused on that and, and giving it you know, proper credence because others would say, well, since when was Zimbabwe a market mover, Lynette? Voila. So even if they were to be successful. Yeah, and think about when they tested bank bail-ins, where did they test it? In Cyprus, right? So these tests always take place in areas where people go, oh, well, that's over there, that can't happen here, or et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I give a lot of credence to it, particularly when you see this move for uh, on a global basis of central banks now repatriating or bringing their gold home. That uh-huh. is more huge than anybody realizes for That's right. Right? I mean, for a number of reasons, but um, this is really picking up steam. So what are these central banks thinking? Why are they no longer wanting to hold it, like, say, at the Bank of England, where they use it as collateral and then trade, right? What what are central banks doing trading anyway? It's, It's about market manipulation. Which makes you think, Lynette, because you and I have been in the in the gold sector for a long time, and you remember when gold, Germany repatriated its gold from the U.S. and they kind of downplayed the reason why. I mean, and what year was that? Years ago. Right. But now all the pieces, I mean, are they lining up? I mean, was that plan already in effect even back then? Yeah, but Germany is a much more advanced economy, and so they're like they were at the forefront. But even think, I think. A lot of it has to do with how the U.S. basically used the dollar system, the SWIFT system, to kick Russia out of the global financial system. And everybody, every central banker was paying attention to that one as well. And so, you know, they know a key thing, which is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. (laughs) And, and. Okay, the BRICS aside, right, Lynette? I mean, would you still argue that the U.S. dollar's best days are behind it? Because there's all these announcements, like this one right here, India signing an agreement with the UAE that would allow it to settle trade in rupees instead of dollars, boosting India uh, India's efforts to cut transaction costs by eliminating dollar conversion. So all these countries kind of trying to leave the stranglehold of the U.S. dollar, rebelling against the U.S. dollar. I mean, at some point, it has to add up to something significant. Oh, a hundred percent. The days of the of the dollar being the world reserve currency are fast coming to a close. And that move actually didn't start even, you know, it started back in 2002 because that was when the Federal Reserve first had to buy U.S. debt which is an indication that the world was either saturated in it or they weren't really, they weren't able or wanting, wanting is probably a better word, uh, to buy the enough of the U.S. debt that we were trying to shove down everybody's throats. So, yeah, there is absolutely zero doubt in my mind that the U.S. dollar is losing its position as the world reserve currency. But I don't really think that it will be a BRICS currency or China or any individual country or smaller group of countries that would take over that role. I I continue to believe that it will be the SDR, the Special Drawing Rights of the Federal Reserve of the um, International Monetary Fund, because there are no limitations. That's a basket of currencies. So, for for a number of reasons. Number one, it's been around since 1969, and everybody has now quite a bit of it. Uh, Between 2009 and then, what, a couple of years ago when the IMF went in and gave everybody, like, a ton of them, of SDRs. Right. So, uh, plus they have the substitution fund. 
so that it'd be easy to convert any dollar denominated assets into SDR denominated assets, therefore establishing the SDR as the largest currency in the world with uh, the most liquid pool of assets because they're taking everything that's do currently dollar denominated and converting it into SDRs. So between being able to put every currency in the world into the SDR, so you have a global currency and then translate that easily into a local currency, that's the one that just makes the most sense to me.